Last year, last uh, summer, uh, Aaron and I went to this, it was in another town, it was a funeral, and we had some friends in that town, and, and our friends kept our kids while, while we went to the funeral. And when we got back from the funeral, the kids were playing in this big dryer box. And you know, they were having just this, this blast playing in, the, in a dryer box. And we started talking about it, and, and our friends were saying, yeah, we, we, uh, our washer, our clothes washer went out. And so we ended up just going ahead and getting a set, a you know, washer and dryer set, because we wanted them to match. And so now our dryer is in our, our storage room you know, building, and we can't use it for anything. And this, my ears perked up because we had a clothes dryer that we'd had since before we were, well, Aaron had had before we were married, and the last couple of years, it had been going every time it's, you know, drying, and it would just make this terrible screeching noise, and, and not only that, but you'd have to run it for like two or three cycles for the clothes to, you know, we, we knew it was on its way out. I mean, it seemed like it had been on its way out for a while, so we knew its days were numbered, and they said, we got, got this dryer, and, and, and ears perked up, perked up, and I was like, you want to sell it? You know, how, how much would you want for it, you know, for, for, for your old dryer? And they're like, no, you can have it. I was like, no, 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 you, what, what, what do you want to sell it for? And they said, look, take it. We're like, thanks, you know, awesome. So we borrowed a truck and trailer, loaded up that clothes dryer, took it home, hooked it up. Love it. Oh, it's quiet. It, it, it dries the clothes in one cycle. It's just, it's just a wonderful little, little clothes dryer. Now, it does have a little eccentric quality about it that it took us just a little bit to figure out. We, uh, we, our first couple of loads that we dried, what, what we real, well, over time we realized this, that the delicate low heat setting, you know, the lowest low heat setting was just perfect for drying regular clothes. The medium setting was great for really hot, if you wanted to dry your towels, you know, something that was really bulky and wet, boy, that medium setting, boy, it had got a good heat. The regular heat setting will burn your clothes to a crisp. <laughs> and those first cu couple of loads, you know, I put that, and I take out my underwear, and the elastic is like this, you know, and it doesn't stretch anymore, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just destroyed. And so, so, okay, we won't use the regular setting, you know, so no regular setting, we started using the medium setting, and, and so that, that went fine. But something weird happened over, the, over the, the, the months. I started realizing that I was, I was outgrowing my clothes, which, which is strange, because I, I haven't gained, you know, any weight to speak of, and I hadn't had a growth spurt since I was 16. Um, so I wouldn't quite understand it why all my, my sleeves were, were like short. And, and the, 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 the clothes that used to kind of come down here were kind of coming up to the, to the waistline. It's like, that's just really strange. And, you know, just, I'm, I'm just not a smart guy. And so it just took a while for me to realize, oh, my clothes are shrinking, okay? The, the, the heat is too much. I need, to, I need to use the delicate cycle when I do the, the drying. That delicate cycle really works just great. But, you know, my clothes dryer, I, it, it's a wonderful clothes dryer, and it does not need to work harder to, to dry clothes. I mean, it does a good job. It doesn't need to work harder. It just has some little uh, miscalibration in its electronic brain that hasn't, you know, doesn't, doesn't quite know uh, when to stop. It doesn't not quite know, you know, how, how to use its heat, use its elements in a way that will best do the function that it was designed for. It's just a little miscalibration in the brain is all it is. It doesn't need to work any harder. What that makes me think of is when we start talking about serving. Uh, when, when we have like, you know, lessons like we did last week on, on serving and doing, doing for others, a lot of times what we hear, we'll, we'll have one of two reactions. We will be like, oh man, I really need to do more. I need to do more. I need to jump in. And so we'll jump into something, we'll start trying to do more, and then we'll burn out in a few weeks and it's done. Or we'll go, oh yeah, you just, you're asking me to do more. You're asking me to serve. I've, I'm already, my life is too busy. My life is crazy. I've got too much going on. I do not need to add more stuff to my, to my life. And both of those reactions is, is a real misunderstanding of what Jesus asks us to do. Because as we saw last week, Jesus doesn't ask us to serve more. Jesus says, I want you to become a servant. Jesus is not saying, I want you to do more. I want you to do more. Jesus says, I want you to be something. I want you to be a servant. See, as long as I am a person 
who serves sometimes, even if that sometimes is an enormous amount of serving. As long as I'm a person who, who serves sometimes, I, I am in control. I decide who I'm going to serve, how long I'm going to serve, when I'm done, and, and the whole time I'm looking forward to the time when I can then do what I want to do. You know, I'm going to do my serving, and then I'll do what I want to do. But a servant is different. A servant wakes up, and their purpose, their whole purpose, is to serve. God, what do you want me to do? How can I serve these people? How, and and, and it's, it's not a matter of, you know, making, making the decision of what I want to do. It's a matter of, what do you want me to do? And I do it. I just serve because that's what I'm about. That's what I'm designed to do. That's what I want to do. There's such a vast difference, even though it seems subtle, between being a person who serves sometimes and being a servant. A lot of times when we, uh, when we think about serving, and, and we think about, boy, you know, if I really do give my life to God, where I say, God, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. However long you want me to do it, whoever you want me to serve, I'm going to do it. We're afraid of something. We're afraid that God is going to have us running over here doing this, running over here doing that. Well, but we'll never have a break. I'm going to be serving. I'm going to serve. Every time there's a need, I'm going to serve. I'm going to serve. And I'll never get a rest. I'll never get to relax. I'll never get to chill. I'll never get to do something fun. I mean, my whole life will just be absorbed from running from this service thing to this service thing. That is not what a servant looks like. You say, how do you know? Because that's not what Jesus looked like. Jesus did not rush around uh, trying to serve here, serve there. Now, was Jesus, you know, did he spend his life serving people? Absolutely. Was he busy at times serving others, healing, teaching others? Absolutely. But everything Jesus did, everything Jesus did was a service to others. And that included going to week-long wedding parties, getting off by himself to rest and to pray getting with his friends, getting away from the crowds and spending time with his friends. All of that, it included all of that. When Jesus was healing, when he was teaching, he was serving. And when Jesus was resting, he was a servant. He was a servant here. He was a servant everywhere and ever since uh, that, that he was. His purpose and his mission was the same. Wherever he was and whatever he was doing, he was a servant. So choosing to be a servant doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be busier. Remember what uh, Jesus said when he was over at Mary and Martha's house and Martha was scurrying around trying to take care of all the details, rushing around, trying to make sure everything was perfect for dinner that night with Jesus. And Jesus said, and I'm going to paraphrase greatly, Martha, chill, come sit down, rest, maybe you'll learn something. You know, just, just slow down. Becoming a servant might mean that you're considerably less busy. It might mean that you'll spend less time, less nights and weekends out on the road, at the ball field, running here and there and everywhere, because you realize what your purpose is. And so you, you organize, you reorient your life toward what your purpose is, and not simply filling your life with stuff. For some of us, some of us probably burn hours a day, on social media, Netflix, video games, whatever, and we just kind of, I mean, just burn that time. And, and yeah, that, that may mean some of that time. God repurposes it for to do something you know, really constructive. But God also uses that time when we're simply uh, relaxing as well. God's purpose is not to keep you exhausted. He wants to energize you where you are doing what you were designed to do. And you know what? When you are doing what God made you to do, what he created you to do, it gives you energy. It is, is exciting. It is fulfilling because ah, this is what you were made for. God's specially created you for a purpose. And that purpose, in, in your own special way, is to serve him by serving God people. But if you just try to serve more without adopting the mindset of a servant, you're just going to burn out. If I'm just going to try to do more without truly seeing myself as a servant, I'll just burn out. Our goal is an inward change, a heart that lives to serve and a heart that loves to serve. So the problem is, is we're not going to experience that change all at once. You know, last week I asked you to be, be praying this week. God, give me the heart of servant. 
Help me to become, help me to be in my heart, in my mind, in my life, help me to be a servant. And that doesn't happen all at once. That's a process. Yes, we, we pray to God, we ask God to change our heart, and God does that. God, if, if, we, if we stay consistent with that and desire that, God will change our heart. But he uses, he uses things to do that, to make that process happen. And one of the things that God uses to help us become servants is that he puts us to doing things that we would do if our heart, hearts were fully changed if we truly saw ourselves as servant. He, he says, okay, I know your heart isn't there yet, but I'm going to put you to doing some things. You desire to be a servant. I'm going to put you to doing some servant kind of things, and I'm going to use that to change your heart. I'm going to use that, that process that he goes through. So, so while we're seeking an inward change, we go ahead and start serving. Uh, we don't wait until my heart is completely changed before I start serving. If, if you wait until your heart's completely changed before you start serving, your heart will never be completely changed because serving in itself is part of the way that God does that. So if I'm going to live as a servant, what do I do? What does that look like? Um, many of you may, you may have a, a cause, a ministry uh, some, some need that God has put on your heart, and maybe you're involved in it right now. You're, you're involved in this ministry, and you're doing this service. That I'll do that. God has, God has put that in your heart. Maybe God has put some kind of service in your heart that you've just kind of, you've kind of pushed aside, but boy, it's always there. Take that step. Get, God put that on your heart for a reason. There's a reason for that. But please don't make the mistake of thinking that being a servant is all about getting involved with some particular service organization, some particular service project. Being a servant is much more about the hundreds of little things, little hidden minor things that you do in which you serve people with your life in a hundred different ways uh, during the day. Uh, so much of uh, being a servant has to do with the little things uh, more than the big things, though the big things certainly matter. Uh, I'm just going to mention a few ways, a few little ways to serve. And some of these are going to seem so minor, you're going to think, well, that, that's just such a little thing, that, that doesn't matter. But, but they are little things that when we incorporate them into our life, they just become a part of our life. They help change our hearts. We orient us to where we're serving others instead of simply serving ourselves. I'll mention just a few, okay? Here's the, oh, I forgot the first verse that I was going to read to you, sorry. This, you know, this, this was a, a small part of the scripture that we looked at, we looked at more broadly uh, last week, where Jesus told his servants, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. Truly being a servant, not simply serving more. Okay, some, some little ways to serve. The service of, of listening. It matters so much when you take the time and the energy to listen to someone. To listen to what they say, to, to hear their heart, to, to absorb it in, in, into you, to really care about what they're going through, what their life is like, what they are interested in, to, to listen to them. Uh, I think of times in my life when I was, I came to somebody, or even they came to me, somebody that I really respected, uh, somebody that was, you know, really I felt like, man, they were just farther along than, than, than me. And, and they sat down and they just listened to me. And they, and they were attentive to what I had to say. And they, and they, they engaged with what, what I was thinking, what I had to say. It mattered to them. And they gave me their feedback on it. And I hung on every word they said. Because they, they, in a sense, they lowered themselves to my level in my world and cared about my world. And that meant so much. Um, when you listen to somebody, and, and this is difficult for, for some of Some of you are like me, and you like to talk, 
Okay? And I, I'm, it's, it's, it's a curse so many times. I, there's times when I'm in a conversation with somebody, they say something, and it reminds me of something that I have done or that I've experienced, or, or it reminds me of a, a really important point that I would like to make, and I just can hardly, you know, wait until they're finished so that I can say what it is that I want to say. And so I just miss the rest of what they're saying because I'm so concerned about what it is that I'm going to say next. Ah, oh, you know, it is difficult for some of us to truly listen, but it is a discipline that matters. It is a discipline that blesses people. Not only does it bless them when you, when you listen, you find that it blesses you, that you actually listening to people, hearing their heart, listening, it, 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 it changes you, it helps you, it helps you see things differently. And not only that, but learning to listen to people actually helps us learn to listen to God. A lot of us pray kind of like we our conversations with other people. We pray simply talking at God. You know, I'm talking, 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 talking at God, and then I'm done, and then I go, okay? And my prayer is simply talking to God. And we forget so much of prayer is being quiet, saying nothing, and listening too. Uh, learning to listen to God is, is it something that's so important, and then we, we learn that discipline through partly through learning to listen to people. One more important note about listening, okay? You don't have to wait on others to come to you to listen to them. You can go to others. You can go to others and ask them what's going on in their life. Talk to them. Inquire about what's... You can invite them into your life. You, you may know somebody that's going through a struggle, and you know they're going through a struggle, and, and you, you ask them you know, how they're doing, really how they're doing, and, and care about how they're doing, and listen to them. You don't have to wait for people to come to you for you to listen. You can go to others and invite them into your life. Um, this this kind of leads to a similar form of service. The service of carrying other people's burdens. Um, we tend to be afraid that if we personally involve ourselves in other people's hardships and their problems, that it's going to hurt us. It's going to, it's going to bring us down. It's going to bring, and a lot of times we might say, I, I might say, you know, I, I, I didn't want to get involved in their problem because I didn't want to be nosy. Well, a lot of times what the real thing is, is I didn't want to get into their, involved in their problem because I didn't want to feel the pain that might be involved in that. I didn't want my life to, I've got enough of my own problems. I don't need to just, you know, be thinking about other people's problems too. It's going to bring me down. But that's a, that's a false thing. When we learn to really care about others, and we learn to care about their problems, and we listen to them, and we, and we, and, I mean, we walk with them through their pain. We can do that without it destroying us. Now, that might take some practice. Some, some of us are real empathy kind of people, and so when we, we come attached to somebody else's problem, it's just, oh, it just, just, just it, it takes some practice for some of us. But we can learn to love, to care, to walk with people through their problems, through their pain without ourselves being destroyed. In fact, through that process, we, we, we are greatly blessed. A quick word of warning about this, though. If we are, if we are going to, to serve in, in these two ways, we need to be committed to the privacy of the person who is sharing with us. We need to, to be committed to protecting the reputation of the person that is sharing with us. We, we might be inclined uh, to... Uh, to be someone who likes to listen to people's problems because we like knowledge and we like to know things. Maybe we like to share the things that we know. And we're getting kind of sucked into the sort of a gossip kind of thing. And that, that will destroy. That will destroy any kind of service that we might do. We want to make sure that we were serving them and in no way uh, uh, talking negative or gossiping about that kind of thing. Or we will, we will do a lot of harm. Another thing. Service of hospitality. Now, this is a service that has become increasingly rare in our culture. And, and we feel this among us, feel this a, a, as a people. Uh, to have people in your home, whether your home be a one-room apartment or your home be a country mansion, 
It's a way of inviting people into your life. A way of inviting people into our lives and showing them that we value them. And, and showing hospitality doesn't have to be complicated, okay? Showing hospitality to, some, to someone is not, you know, showing our house, okay? It's like, hey, I've got to have everything fixed. I've got to have everything clean. Everything has to be perfect because they have to somehow think that I actually live like this. And so because I don't want to have to do all that work of making my, my place look all special, I just don't have people over. That's such a mistake. You know, people aren't going to feel very comfortable at your house anyway if it looks perfect. Because if it looks perfect, it's not going to look like their house, okay? Not going to look like their place. Um, it's okay for us to, to have people into our homes. It's not only okay, it's needed for us to have people into our homes. Welcome them into our lives. Your home is not just for you. If God has blessed you with a place to live, it's also a place for you to invite people, to invite them into your life so that you can walk with them, so you can serve them through that, that hospitality. So, so open your home as you open your life. The service of simple courtesy. Now, we, we may not think much about, about this at all. Every society has its ways of, of showing uh, showing value to others, of, of being courteous, of being polite, that kind of thing. You know, we, we teach our kids, we try to teach our kids, you know, hey, talk to people, greet them, look them in the eye, say thank you, say please, you know, do all these kind of things that are, that are polite and courteous to do. But, you know, really, we don't tend to put a lot of value on that in our society, and it's a real mistake. Because being courteous to somebody is a way of showing that we value them. That we, that we honor them. It's a way of honoring others. I was in Lowe's a couple days ago uh, getting some hardware, and I was in this line, this checkout line, and the line next to me was moving, and my line was not, okay? And so I was sitting in my non-moving line, and here this, is, this line's you know, going along. It's like, okay, all, all right, I may, may be here for a while. And, and I hear this uh, lady's voice, and she says, hey, and, and I turn, and this this older lady, really friendly lady, she says, oh, you've been here a lot longer than we have. Please, you know, come over into our line. And I'm like, oh, no, no, that's great. I'm in this line. You're, you're, you're there. That's, it's all good. And she, no, please, please come over in our line. And the way she did it, and the way, I mean, I, oh, thank you. Thank you. I got in line, and, and she, I, I tell you, she could walk. I'm terrible with names and faces. All of you know this. Um, if she walked in right now, I would know her face, and I would be want to hang on every word she said. There was some uncommon courtesy in her. She was looking at others. She was, she was seeing what others needed. She, she was seeing the needs that were around her in a way that is just not, it's just not very common. I want to value people like that. I want to be aware of needs around me like that. You know, little acts of courtesy, little acts of kindness, they have this ripple effect, and they spread and end up affecting people that we don't even know are there. You know, the simple service of being courteous, of being kind, of putting somebody else first. It's a, it's a big deal. One more, one more little thing I want to share. This is the, the service of pointing to God. There, there are a lot of us that are very comfortable with uh, being kind to people, being polite to people, you know, helping people out, you know, doing things like that. We're, we're very comfortable in, in that realm. But we get very uncomfortable when it comes to bringing God into our conversation. You know, it's like, hey, man, I can be nice to people and stuff, but, but the thought of, you know, bringing up God in conversation, that just freezes me, you know, right? That just, just is terrifying to me. And it doesn't have to, we kind of have the idea that if I bring God into the conversation, then it's like I'm somehow forcing God on them. It's like I'm, I'm, I'm you know, kind of un, making them uncomfortable. I'm bringing God, and it doesn't have to be that way at all. Pointing to God can be as simple as giving God credit for a blessing. Man, God has blessed us with a beautiful day today. This is, this is good. You know, somebody compliments me, and, you know, really, you know, God, God has blessed me with that. There's a UPS man who uh, come, comes to our office, and I don't really see the UPS men very often because my office is just a little bit behind, but, but I can hear them. And, and th you know, there's different guys that kind of rotate through picking up at, at our office, and one of them, every time he comes, you know, he comes in, he's kind of polite, he's not, and, and as he leaves, he says, you have, to whoever's up front, he says, have a blessed day. And he goes, 
you know, he comes out, hey, I hope you guys have a blessed day. And he goes, he is saying so much with that little phrase. He is saying something about himself. He is saying something about his faith. He is saying something about how he values other people. Such a simple little thing, but, but pointing people to God, bringing God into the conversation just in little ways where we, where we point to the one who is the source of our life and who is the source of their lives as well. Of course, we could, we could talk about all kinds of ways that, that we can serve in this church body, in our community, and all of those things are, are so very important. But being a servant, not just serving, not just doing some serving things, but being a servant is really made up of a hundred little things we do where we are looking at others as people created in the image of God, as people who matter, people who are loved by God, and who people, because God has loved us, we love them too. And just those little things, things like listening, Things like bearing people's burdens, carrying them, you know, you know, we know they're having a tough time making contact with them and, and, and talking with them. Uh, things, like, things like just being polite. Thing, things like inviting people into our home, inviting them to our lives, bringing God in the conversation. Just little bitty things that orient our lives towards serving others instead of simply doing what comes natural, and that is just serving ourselves. The goal is not to be someone who serves sometimes, but to be a servant. God will use his servants to change the world. Let's pray. Dear God, we, uh, we thank you that you're not impressed by our big sacrifices, our big things that we maybe give lots of money to or invest a whole lot into and our big showy things, that, that those aren't necessarily the ways you work the most powerfully. We know that you work most powerfully through a changed heart. But God, we also know that it's a lot easier for us to give up a big chunk of our time, or give up a big chunk of our money, than it is to allow you to change our hearts. And so, God, we want to ask you to do the hard thing in us, but the joyful thing in us. God, we want to, to become people who see people like you see them. We want to become people who love to serve, who live to serve, who enjoy serving, and, and not, not doing things and then be wanting to hurry up so that we can get to what we want to do. But where what we want to do is to bless people. God, we want that kind of heart change. Will you do that in us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have a, have a need, a, a, a prayer need, uh, if you want to become a Christian, we're, we're going to have some elders in the back that would love to talk to you. If you're, you're, you're struggling with something or you would just want to talk about something, pray about something, they'll be there. Um, we're just going to sing, sing a couple of songs. And Would you stand as we sing this together?